So I was trying to figure out a way to get even uh, with Dr. Greenberg for this. And um, so I thought uh, what I would do is I'd just show this slide. Uh, this is what mountains look like for uh, people from Texas. Overpasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as was mentioned, this is an incredibly complicated area. Uh, the immune system has evolved uh, over millions of years to try to protect us from infections uh, from all sorts of sources. This could be infections from everything as small as a virus all the way up to, to organisms, uh, you know, tapeworms and stuff like that. Uh, it's been an, an arms race between uh, you know, humans and other mammals, uh, or animals in general. It's been an arms race between them and the things trying to attack them. So they're constantly evolving, and as a result, it's become extremely complicated to, uh, to try to protect ourselves from all of these different things trying to get us. Uh, I thought I'd start out by just identifying some of the players involved uh, in the immune system. And uh, first, some just a few uh, definitions. One is that you will see a lot of talk about CD this and CD that. Uh, what is a CD? Well, when they were trying to um, uh, figure out what's going on with the immune system, uh, it turns out that a lot of things are controlled by proteins that are on the surface of cells. And they were looking at rats and mice and humans, and they would find a protein in a mouse, and a protein in a rat, protein in a human, and then after a while they realized that they were all talking about the same proteins, but they had uh, they'd identified them in different species coming from different directions, so they just consolidated all that and called it a cluster of differentiation. Uh, so this is a, a cluster of molecules across species that all refer to the same thing. So now when we say CD4, uh, we know that we're talking about the same thing, be it a rat or a mouse or a human. <clears throat> so uh, these are simply groups of proteins that are on the surface of cells. We identify them by making an antibody against that in the lab that we can target, and, and uh, that's our marker for how to define that molecule and tell what cell type that is. There are cytokines. Uh, cytokines are proteins that, if, that uh, one cell will produce to affect the behavior of another cell. So these are the control mechanisms uh, that cells use to talk to each other with. There's chemokines which are attractants, so uh, these are molecules that a cell will uh, spill out uh, into the fluid around it to attract other cells uh, to that location. Most of the immune system comes out of the bloodstream, and this is a, a picture just showing you some of the components of blood. Uh, it starts with a uh, stem cell, um, and uh, that stem cell can grow into a number of different uh, types. Uh, red blood cells, I think you, know, uh, you all know about. There's white blood cells and platelets. Platelets are the things that make your blood clot. Uh, the white blood cells are mainly involved in, in the immune system, and uh, there are many different types of white blood cells. Uh, there are macrophages, which are really the garbage disposal units uh, of the immune system. Uh, basophils and eosinophils, these uh, tend, uh, basophils tend to be involved in allergies, and eosinophils are especially important uh, at looking at, par at uh, controlling parasites like, you know, your tapeworms and things like that. Uh, neutrophils are directed against bacteria, and then lymphocytes are the main workhorses of the immune system, and uh, that's where most of the action is as far as these autoimmune diseases go. There are many kinds of lymphocytes, uh, and uh, they start with a, uh, with a common uh, precursor uh, cell type, and then as it divides uh, the uh, daughter cells can go any of a number of directions, but there are three big divisions of this. Uh, one is B cells, uh, and as we'll mention subsequently, those tend to make antibodies. There are T cells, and there are natural killer cells. Uh, the natural killer cells are capable of just killing 
uh, cells on their own. Uh, so when they identify a target, they don't need any help. They can just right then and there just kill off uh, their target. Uh, the T cells uh, are divided into many types, uh, but one of the big divisions of them is CD4 and CD8. And so here's that CD thing again. Uh, so these are identified by a protein on their surface, and I'll show you that uh, in a moment. Um, and uh, that protein determines their behavior. So uh, now we'll talk about that CD4 and CD8. So CD4 cells, <coughs> Uh, these cells <clears throat> are called helper cells in, in the old, uh, old language. Um, and uh, there are at least five types of these, and some people might say a few more. Uh, they respond uh, by actually, uh, whatever their target is, they actually turn it on and rev it up, uh, which is why they're called helper cells. Uh, this first one, the, the uh, T follicular uh, helper cell, uh, is the one that helps B cells make antibodies. So it turns on the B cell. Uh, Th2 and Th1 we'll get to in a moment, but those are directed against different kinds of pathogens, like an extracellular pathogen would be a bacteria, uh, an intracellular pathogen uh, would be like a virus that's inside the cell. Th17 uh, are used mostly to fight off funguses and some bacteria. They tend to be extremely inflammatory, and you'll hear a lot of talk about those as being particularly aggressive and uh, bad players. And then the Tregs, uh, their job is to regulate all the others, so uh, they're becoming increasingly important in our understanding of how the immune system stays under control. Uh, CD8 lymphocytes are, uh, are, are uh, at least the family tree is simpler. Uh, these are uh, really just cytotoxic T cells. They respond by killing uh, whatever their target is. Uh, they do this uh, in diabolical ways. They have this thing called perforin, uh, which uh, is a protein that they put out and it, it forms actually a hole in the cell that they're targeting. And then they have these two uh, other uh, proteins, granzyme uh, and then uh, FAS ligand, uh, FAS ligand. And those are actually able to go through that hole in the membrane, and both of them trigger something called apoptosis, which is a suicide pill that all cells have built into them. Uh, and it causes the cell that they are targeting to self-destruct. This apoptosis is really useful. Uh, it's uh, used to eliminate cancer cells, virus-infected cells, but it's also the way our bodies develop. Uh, for example, when we're a fetus, we have about 10 times as many brain cells as we need, and as the fetus develops, uh, about 90% of those are killed off, uh, leaving us with the best 10% of the brain cells left. Although clearly there are exceptions to the way that works, and politicians, you know, things like that. <laughs> uh, this is a bit about the B cells. Um, B cells uh, are the ones that make antibodies. And um, uh, in that middle portion, the antigen presenting cell uh, interacts with the B cell. Uh, and the B cell can go one of a couple of directions. Um, one, oh, sorry. Uh, one is that it uh, can form this IgM secreting cell, CD5. Uh, this cell uh, doesn't need any help. Uh, it identifies um, molecules in bacteria and uh, viruses that are unique and it just starts making antibodies that block those uh, immediately. It's a little sloppy, uh, and those antibodies are not really tightly targeted, but it gets you started in protecting yourself until the, the, the bottom part of the slide kicks in. Um, the bottom part, uh, is, uh, when a T cell helps the B cell activate, uh, then it can uh, tighten its uh, antibody production uh, so that it, it is specifically targeting that one uh, target. 
uh, and then it reproduces and forms plasma cells, which just pump out tons of antibodies. So it can uh, can really narrow uh, the attack uh, that it's directing at. Um, there are two ways to to get to this um, this plasma cell, which pumps out tons of antibodies. One is uh, that it can just go directly uh, from uh, the, that top cell, the hypermutated cell, to a plasma cell. Uh, this takes a little bit of time because you have to uh, take this, the cell and it has to rearrange its DNA and form an antibody that is really tightly targeted uh, against uh, the, the protein that it's trying to get. Um, and then it has to reproduce. Uh, and so that takes several days, usually, you know, seven to 10 days. So that's why uh, when you get an infection, it takes several days for you to, to eliminate it because you're waiting for this process to take place. The other is that you can have a memory B cell. Uh, these are B cells that have already seen that, uh, that target, uh, and they just hang around waiting for the target to happen again. And they, they're already revved up, they're ready to go. So as soon as they are activated, they can immediately go straight to plasma cells and start pumping out tons of, of um, antibodies. So this is what happens when they give you uh, a tetanus vaccine, for example. Uh, you're exposed to the antigen, you make antibodies against it. Uh, these, uh, some of these B cells form memory B cells and they just hang out waiting for the tetanus to come back. And then when it does, they just blast out tons of antibody and uh, are able to ward off the tetanus before you're even aware of it. So that's why vaccines work so well. Uh, that's why most of us get uh, most diseases, infectious diseases once, uh, because once we've seen it once, we make memory B cells and uh, then we're able to ward it off within just a few hours or a day or two. Another one of the players are antigen presenting cells. And a little bit later, I'll show you how all this fits together. But um, these cells are not real good at finding their targets all by themselves. It's much more efficient if they have a cell that, that presents them with their target. And these are called antigen presenting cells. There are two big uh, divisions of that. One is called a non-professional cell which is kind of a silly name because basically every cell in your body is a non-professional cell. Um, this is really used for uh, viruses. So every cell in our body could be infected by a virus and therefore the, any of our cells can present the virus to these others, uh, to the B cells and T cells. The others are professional uh, antigen presenting cells. And in this case, their only job is to present antigens to, to these um, other cells. Uh, these are macrophages and dendritic cells and some B cells. Um, you'll notice uh, the non-professional has something called MHC1 and the professional's MHC2. I'll show you a picture of this in a minute, but these are proteins on their surface that, that the target actually binds to and, and then that is, is how the antigen is presented to the T cell or B cell. Uh, and uh, there are different pathways depending on if it's a non-professional or a professional cell. Uh, this just shows the macrophages. Uh, they can go a couple of ways. They can go down this macrophage line on the left. That's the garbage disposal unit. So, uh, when you have uh, damage to some organ, in this case the nervous system, uh, the macrophages will uh, rush in there and clean up the mess that's left over and remove all the debris. On the right side, uh, they can go and form a dendritic cell. Uh, dendrites, uh, that means tree in Latin, so you can see they are kind of got all these branches on them. And uh, they have all these branches because they're reaching out, trying to grab T cells and B cells so that they can present their antigen to them. So that's all the players. It's rather complicated, but uh, self-defense is rather complicated. Uh, and this is how it all kind of comes together. So you'll get an antigen, which is some sort of foreign substance that you're trying to defend against. 
And then there are two types of immune system things that kick in. One's called the innate immune system. The innate immune system is what your body's first line of defense is. It's uh, not very specific. It's just trying to hold down the fort until the main troops can arrive. And then uh, a few days later, the adaptive immune system comes in. The adaptive immune system is much more specific for that one target, and it's much more powerful, and ultimately that's what you have to do to eliminate the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the antigen that's trying to attack you. So first, this innate immune system. There are many components to try to, to ward off these infections. One is just anatomical barriers like skin. It's hard for bacteria to get through that. Hard for bacteria to get through our stomach, which has a pH of 2, uh, because the acid, you know, kills a lot of them. Uh, there's inflammatory cytokines, which are chemical signals to attract uh, defense uh, cells into an area. Uh, the complement system is a protein system in your blood that pokes holes in, uh, in the membranes of, uh, of bacteria and other cells uh, to kill them. Mast cells are the ones responsible for allergies, so when you get hay fever, you can thank your mast cells for that. Uh, the phagocytes are, the again, those garbage disposal units. Uh, and then at the bottom, there are three types of cells that are more directly defense. Uh, one is natural killer cells that I mentioned. Um, and these kill cells that do not have the proper proteins on their surface. So if a cell is infected by a virus, uh, the, the, the metabolic pathways of that cell are disruptive, uh, disrupted. It does not have the right proteins on its surface because its machinery is being used to make viruses instead. And these natural killers can recognize that this cell is missing the correct proteins and it will just kill it on the spot. Uh, these gamma delta T cells uh, are able to attack uh, cells uh, in uh, like the T cells, like the slide I showed before. Uh, they're rather nonspecific and kind of weak, uh, but they can at least get uh, the immune system started. And then the B cells, uh, there's a subset of those that uh, can just create antibodies as a first line. Uh, before it gets real specific. So we have ways of kind of starting the immune system for a few days until the uh, adaptive immune system kicks in. Uh, this uh, just shows some of the receptors that the innate immune system uses. And um, there are uh, many different uh, ones of these. I, it could go on for slides and slides, but there are proteins and sugar uh, chains that are unique to bacteria that these things can recognize. So as soon as they see one of these unusual structures, they will just attack it. Well, now to the adaptive immune system. Uh, with the adaptive immune system, antigens, usually proteins, uh, have to be processed first by these antigen presenting cells. And then they're uh, presented uh, to uh, their target cell, either a T or a B cell, and this turns them on uh, and makes them rev up and really uh, aggressively attack that target. Uh, there are many parts to, of this depending on what kind of uh, threat that we're under. So if they're coming from the cytosol, which is the inside of a cell, uh, then that would tend to be like a virus that's infecting a cell or some bacteria would infect the inside of a cell. Uh, those uh, tend to go through this uh, MHC1 molecule uh, and uh, lead to an interaction with the CD8 uh, T cell. The vesicular ones are uh, actually bacteria, uh, parasites, toxins that are outside of the cell and they get engulfed in these garbage disposal unit macrophages and then are presented, and they tend to react to the MH2 molecule and the CD4 cells. And then uh, the B cells, as I said, make antibodies. These are primarily directed against toxins that are small molecules that are floating around in our blood. 
Well, this is, this is how it, it all comes together. So you have an antigen presenting cell. Uh, it has gotten uh, a foreign protein or target and engulfed it inside. It digests it and breaks it into small chunks and then it will put a chunk of that onto the MHC molecule and show it on the surface of the cell. So that red box is the antigen that it's presenting and it's within this MHC molecule. On the right hand side is our CD8 T cell and we call it a CD8 cell because you can see that yellow um, protein on its surface is the CD8 protein. So uh, it also has a T cell receptor and each T cell has a different receptor on it. So we have millions of different receptors for T cells that can identify millions of different uh, targets like this. So uh, as Dr. Bates showed in her slide, when these two match up, uh, then it activates the cell. And uh, so it has to fit together perfectly just like this. To make sure there's no mistake, uh, there are these other molecules, and in this case, I put the B7.1 and the CD28 on there, and those also have to match up. So uh, this is such a dangerous um, thing to activate a T cell that it doesn't take one lock and key, it takes two. Uh, so when both of these match up, then this CD8 cell is turned on. Um, and as I said, uh, CD8 cells, once they're activated, kill their targets, which is why you want two keys, because you don't want it to go out of control. This is the CD4 cell, and it does the exact same thing. You need two locks and keys to turn it on, um, and when they match up and turn on that CD4 cell, uh, then you can make tons of that uh, CD4 cell. Uh, it's fully activated. And in this case, it doesn't kill its target, it turns them on. Uh, there are two types of CD4 cells, Th1 and Th2, um, and they, they target different uh, types of, uh, of threats. Uh, one is uh, the intracellular ones, and the other is ones in the cytosol. Um, for most autoimmune diseases, uh, Th1 is viewed as more aggressive and as the bad guys, and Th2 tends to be a much more acceptable way for your immune system to uh, react. So a lot of our uh, treatments, for example, are directed at shifting away from Th1 and toward Th2. This is the B cells, and they also uh, have to be activated by this double lock and key system. Uh, and um, in this case, it's usually a T cell that turns them on. Uh, so you need to first activate the T cells, the T cell then activates the B cells. And when a B cell gets activated, it makes antibodies. Uh, antibodies are then pumped out uh, in huge quantities uh, and they can just bind up uh, their target. Um, it, if this weren't complicated enough, it gets even worse. Uh, <laughs> so this is just a, believe it or not, simplified uh, diagram of some of the controls on this. And all of those little, uh, little lettered uh, things are cytokines uh, and chemokines that are used to control uh, just how a cell uh, decides whether it's going to grow up to be a Th1 or a Th2 cell. Uh, and then once it does, it pumps out all of these other uh, molecules, like on the left-hand column, the CD4 puts out gamma interferon and GMCSF and all, you know, that whole line of things. Those, in turn, uh, control other parts of the immune system. So you can see it's just networks within networks within networks of controls, and they're all controlled by these chemical signals with impossible names. Um, and um, uh, so there's, uh, there's a lot of um, fail-safe measures in here to make sure, you know, if one part goes out of control, then all these other chemical signals will just... 
uh, regulate other parts of it, but also there's a lot of places that things could go wrong. So I thought I would end up uh, with just using multiple sclerosis, which uh, is the autoimmune disease, uh, from at least neurologic autoimmune disease that we know the most about. Um, with this, uh, somehow the antigen has to be released from the brain uh, and it has to get into the peripheral blood and eventually make its way into the macrophages in a lymph node. There these antigen presenting cells take that up and they present the antigen to the lymphocytes. Uh, those lymphocytes get activated, they proliferate, uh, they migrate out of the lymph nodes and back into the brain uh, and there uh, additional inflammation is done which causes uh, more damage to the tissues and it can be just sort of self-perpetuating. Uh, there are several components to this. One is how do they get into the brain? Uh, there are several different ways. These red Y-shaped things are antibodies. Uh, antibodies are proteins that are actually shaped like a Y and the tips of the Y attached to the target. Uh, those are small enough they can actually just kind of float into the brain. Um, the cells on the other hand uh, are too big to get through the blood vessel wall and these uh, have to get into the brain by binding uh, the proteins uh, on them to the proteins on the blood vessel wall. So that's the little blue and the little green bars. Uh, this is kind of like the two sides of Velcro uh, and the two Velcros have to match together. Uh, and that stops the white blood cell from flowing along uh, it gets stuck there on the side of the blood vessel and then when that happens it's able to actually crawl through the blood vessel and into the brain. These cells uh, don't just happen by too often, uh, they are rather attracted to the area of damage and the far right of the slide just shows some of the uh, the chemical signals that are sent out to attract cells there is TNF-alpha and interferon gamma, IL-1. Uh, so there's a very complicated system of chemical signals and then cells that respond to that and come into the area. Uh, once they get through this, uh, the blood vessel and uh, they have to get through this mesh of proteins that is put in place. These are the matrix metalloproteins uh, and so you have to have enzymes to slice through that uh, to get the cells and the antibodies through and so these are the matrix metalloproteinases uh, and other proteinases to lyse that. So very complicated even how to get cells in there. Once they get there they attack myelin and Again, there are many different ways that we can attack targets. Uh, uh, one is through the B cells, so the B cells can make antibodies. These antibodies can bind to the myelin and directly damage it. There's complement, uh, which is uh, this part of the innate immune system that's able to make holes in the membrane, so uh, it pokes holes in the myelin and kills that cell. Uh, the macrophages, the garbage disposal units, uh, can uh, bind to these antibodies that sticks them to that location and then they can put out all sorts of noxious chemicals that kill that cell. And then the CD8 cells can also uh, uh, directly attack uh, the myelin and they do it uh, the same way uh, that I mentioned before. They put a, hole in the membrane and have these proteins go through the hole that activate the uh, self-destruct apoptosis pathway so that the, kill, the cell uh, kills itself. So there are many unanswered questions about these autoimmune diseases with the biggest one uh, is what is the antigen. Uh, in MS we don't know after decades of looking to try to find what the antigen is that's setting this all off, we don't know. Uh, probably the closest that we have uh, in this field is neuromyelitis optica where there is an antibody that seems to be pretty tightly uh, associated with the disease, uh, the, you know, the IgG NMO antibody. 
Uh, but most of the diseases, we have no idea what the actual target is. Another one is we talked a lot about T cells and stuff, but as you uh, saw in some of these slides, you cannot activate the T cells uh, unless that antigen gets into the lymph nodes out in the rest of the body. So something has to happen first to the brain to release that antigen so it gets into the peripheral bloodstream. And we have no idea uh, what it is that's setting this off. This is sometimes called the danger theory in uh, immunology, and it states that you, you don't get an immune response until actual tissue damage has occurred. So something has to start the damage in the first place. Uh, another is what is the role of this innate immune system? Because if we talk about the T cells. Uh, you, you can have entire you know, three, four day conferences in this uh, field just on T cells uh, and the bad behavior of them. Uh, but uh, very little is known about the innate immune system. We know that it's actually activated. So uh, what is it that's setting it off um, and, uh, and how does it contribute to this whole thing? Another uh, unknown is if there is one antigen, uh, say myelin basic protein or, or this uh, uh, aquaporin-4 uh, antibody uh, in um, NMO, how is it that that one antigen sets off the entire immune system? Uh, as you've seen, the immune system is somewhat compartmentalized to, with parts of it directed against certain types of targets. But in these diseases, almost every aspect of the immune system is activated, and we don't understand how that works. Um, and then finally, what non-immunology factors might contribute to the disease? Uh, because there's probably a component, as I said, of something damaging uh, the tissue that sets off the release of antigens in the first place. So uh, I think that's my last slide. Yes, this is the other picture to show you what real mountains look like. And, and um, just to put it in perspective, if you look right in the center on the top of that ridge, that's my oldest daughter, uh, who's that tiny dot sitting there. Um, so. Uh, with that, uh, thanks for your attention, and I'll uh, be happy to try to answer questions.